Godly people in an ungodly world, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but godly people in an ungodly world have a way of rubbing people wrong. Just your presence. Mm, I'm trying to preach here this morning. Just your presence causes problems. If, if you are living this like you should, not only is your righteousness magnetic and attractive, but it is also repulsive. It will offend someone somewhere because it has a way of revealing things that people want to keep hidden. In John 15 to 22, Jesus said, If I had not come, if I had not spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now, he said, they have no cloak for their sin. See, righteousness lived out reveals. And revelation creates reaction. And many times that reaction is persecution. All of that stuff that we would be like, mm, let that go to my brother. I don't want any of that. According to the Cato World Institute, Christianity is now the world's most persecuted religion. We always thought it was true. Now we know, as a matter of fact, it is true. Do we know what that means? Already in 2022, 5,600 Christians around the world have been killed for no other reason than their faith. 6,000 of them have been imprisoned. Right now, at least 6,000 people are somewhere in the world in a jail because for no other reason than their Christianity. 4,000 of people have been kidnapped. Many of them, they have no idea where they are, if they are alive or dead, but somewhere, someone's loved one, just because of their profession of faith, has been kidnapped and is missing. And to this moment, in 2022, 5,000 buildings around the world have been destroyed. Just like ours. It would be as if we showed up here this Sunday morning and this building was burned to the ground. Living a godly life in an ungodly world creates something. Living a godly life in an ungodly world also carries a heavy spiritual toll on you. Oftentimes misdiagnosed as sadness or depression. Revelation is coming, y'all. Oftentimes, people, Christian people find themselves overwhelmed by darkness and overwhelmed by sadness and overwhelmed by depression. And you wrongly diagnose yourself as saying, well, I'm just having a bad day. Or I'm just having a little bit of depression. Or depression is my life. It runs in my family. I can't understand why I'm so depressed. You're depressed because you are a godly person living in an ungodly world. <laughs> Second Peter. Chapter 2 and verse 8, talking about Lot, said that righteous man dwelling among them vexed his righteous soul every day, seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. See, you're not crazy. Elbow somebody said, that's for you right there. That's, uh, you're not crazy. Living as a godly person in an ungodly world brings heaviness down onto your life. It brings persecution on the day of Pentecost. There was immediate persecution. These men are drunk. Imagine yourself being in church and people walking up to you say, oh, what are you doing drinking this time of the morning? Immediate persecution, but then there was an ongoing cost. There was an ongoing persecution that ranges from persecution to comments to exclusion. Some of you have been doing your best. Help me, God, to pursue God. You want more of Him. But the cost is too great. Your phone isn't ringing like it was. Your friends... Some of you, I'm preaching to you this morning, your friends are, are seemingly disappearing from your life. They're, they were there, you were there all the time, and now all of a sudden, I haven't spoken to them for a while. And you hear from someone else, the reason that I'm not hanging with you anymore is because you've turned weird. You've just gotten into this religious thing. You're just strange. You're, you're weird. You're radical. Don't you know that that place is a cult? Uh, little Jimmy Jones right here. I, I don't know. That place is a cult. You're crazy. You're not fun like you used to be. That is a persecution that is a very real cost that you can measure. To see revival at some point you have to say this and mean it. The servant is not greater than the master. If they hated my master they will hate me as well. I'm willing to bear that cross. They can hate me too. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God. To see revival. There is a cost. Sometimes the cost is intense prayer. Revival is a result. Prayer is warfare. 